Let's try and put this alleged shoot down of the Malaysian plane into context. Obviously, our thoughts, our prayers go to the victims and their families. At least 295 people on board uh, reported dead. Let's put it into some kind of context, though, in terms of what's happening in the general region. And then we'll move on to what we know at this early stage, which is obviously evolving all the time, and some of the speculation involved. So, as SCG News reports, in this very region near where this plane went down, there have been some key developments just in the past 24 to 48 hours alone, where Ukrainian troops fighting Eastern Ukrainian separatists have suffered heavy casualties in the past 24 hours, and there are reports that separatists have managed to gain control of a new town on the Russian border. In addition, there's talk of Putin imposing a no-fly zone over eastern Ukraine. So this alleged shootdown of the Malaysian plane comes at a key strategic time in terms of the battle between the post-coup Ukrainian government and the Russians. So you probably know the basic details. The plane was flying from Amsterdam to Kuala Lumpur. It was travelling at, at an altitude of 33,000 feet. It was it disappeared from radar around 180 miles from the Russian border, although apparently crashed a lot nearer to the Russian border. Of course, Ukraine immediately, basically within minutes, blamed Russia, saying that Ukraine has no long-range air defence systems in the area. And the plane was shot down because the Russian air defence systems were affording protection to Russian mercenaries, i.e. Ukrainian rebels in the east of the country. Other reports from Ukrainian government sources accuse Russia even of shooting down the jet, not surface-to-air missile, but air-to-air missile from some kind of fighter jet. So there are numerous reports, but the Ukrainian government immediately blamed Russia, basically within minutes of the incident being reported. Russia has denied any notion of their involvement in shooting down the aircraft, but interestingly enough, RT just reported about 20 minutes ago, before I made this video, citing a source in the aviation industry who said that President Vladimir Putin's plane went across the same trajectory, the same route as the Malaysian airliner, and that it was Putin's plane which was the actual target of the shootdown. Of course, at this point, that's a very lurid claim. Um, I haven't seen any real evidence to substantiate it, but it was reported on RT. Somebody in the aviation industry speculated that the Ukrainian government actually tried to shoot down President Putin's plane. So hopefully that turns out to be nonsense. Otherwise, it could very well be the start of a regional war. But obviously, as yet, nothing confirmed. Another interesting development was that Strobe Talbot, the former US Deputy Secretary of State and head of the Brookings Institution, which is one of the most influential think tanks in the United States, and very much a progenitor of Washington consensus came out and basically blamed Russia for the shootdown, claiming that a rebel leader had acknowledged responsibility for the shootdown and that he was being sponsored, armed by the Kremlin. Talbot deleted his original tweet, which had got over a thousand retweets after suspicions were cast on the veracity of this Facebook post. And he's since replaced it with a watered down version, but basically saying the same thing, accusing the rebels of being behind the attack funded by the Kremlin. Let's not forget a little piece of history here. Of course, back in 2001, Ukraine admitted that it was responsible for firing a missile that brought down a Russian jet over the Black Sea, killing 78 people. So they seem to have a track record of doing this. Also, the BBC quoted an aviation expert who said that shooting down a plane at 32,000 feet would require sophisticated radar-guided missiles. Therefore, it's virtually impossible that Ukrainian rebels are to blame because they just don't have access nor the prowess to operate that kind of technology. So the Ukrainians are blaming Russia because they're saying that it wouldn't be possible to bring down this airliner with shoulder-held manpad missiles. It would have required far more sophisticated book missiles, Russian made, of course, which have a range of 22,000 metres. So within minutes, 
they were blaming the Russians and saying that it was Russian-made book missiles that were responsible for the attack on the airliner. And of course, an army of YouTube conspiracy theorists are already out saying that, you know, this was the original missing Malaysian Airlines flight that they shot down just to blame Russia. There's no evidence of that. Some are suggesting that the video footage shows no missile attack on the actual plane and that it just kind of fell out of the sky, hit the ground as if it was just an accident. So there are people claiming that. And obviously in the coming hours and days, there will be innumerable different claims and pieces of speculation which will pour forth on YouTube and all the other platforms. But again, to put it into context, of course, the BRICS countries came out a couple of days ago and announced the alternative to the IMF, the alternative to the dollar system, as they try and build a multipolar world in opposition to the unipolar world, the new world order envisaged by NATO and the United States. Key battles going on in eastern Ukraine. Um, Ukrainian soldiers apparently surrounded, suffering a lot of he heavy casualties in the region. So this is a very sensitive time for such an incident of this nature to have occurred. So that's about all we know for the time being. Obviously, a lot of this is speculation yet to be confirmed. It's an evolving situation. The facts will change, but the Ukrainian government is about to present evidence, which they've gathered very quickly, some may say suspiciously quickly, blaming Russia for the shootdown of this jet uh, Russia is already denying those charges. So we'll keep up with developments. Obviously, this is a horrible tragedy and the victims should be paramount in everybody's thoughts. But it could really be a massive development in terms of this new Cold War, this clash between the unipolar and the multipolar world that we've been talking about for years. And we will continue to track developments at Infowars.com. Stay tuned.